Welcome to beautiful Koenigsee, an over-touristed hellscape that I promised I would never make a video on because I didn't think there was anything I could add to, well, such a well-documented tourist trap. But I was wrong. Welcome to today's video where I show you the most authentic hidden Bavarian gem I have ever found. I promise you, you've never seen Berchtesgaden quite like this before. Now, our adventure today to the most beautiful, the most over-touristed, and most misunderstood lake in Germany begins unceremoniously along the side of a road journeying to the Hauptbahnhof. Because of course, Berchtesgaden has one. We begin here and not Munich for one reason alone. It's a three-hour train ride and I didn't feel like filming it. <laughs> We got a little bit of B-roll, but essentially I got off work seven o'clock, got on a train for three hours to arrive here. And that's yet another reason why ultimately it's hard for me to recommend this lake to you because compared to all of the other lakes, it's just so much more of a pain in the ass to arrive at. We still need to take another bus ride. And with the amount of congestion and tourists, sometimes you're not guaranteed a place, not even standing room. Though we might actually be in luck because the green bus behind me is going to Salzburg and it is absolutely packed. So maybe because the weather's a bit shit, they're all interested in going out into the town, into the city, but instead of into nature. So we might be in luck because I've been worried. I came here about three months ago doing a little scouting mission to see if my opinion had changed from all those years ago. Just to give it a second shot. I try to be fair, I really do. And it was a nightmare. I arrived here after the three hour train ride, got ready to get on the bus. I waited 45 minutes for the bus. I was at the front of the line. There was like 150 people with me. But because there's such a mix of cultures, because it's so over tourist, you've got everybody here. Nobody agrees on how to queue, even the Germans. And so it was just an absolute mad dash into that bus. It was terrible, but we'll see what happens today. All right, I think we might have actually gone in luck today. It doesn't look that busy, way better than last time. So, I'm gonna sit right here. And now, at last, after three hours on the train, one night in a hotel, and one bus ride later, we have made it to the eponymous Koenigsee parking lot. <laughs> And I point it out only because I don't see anyone else pointing it out. I mean, maybe just Americans being very car-centric are blind to this, but as someone living here in Germany, this is the largest parking lot I have seen since the last time I visited a Costco in Memphis, Tennessee. It's massive. And again, that just kind of points out that like they're expecting a lot of people to get here by car. I can't really begrudge them that though. I mean, the train ride and bus ride, it does take a really long time, but they're also expecting a lot of tour buses. So unlike all the other lakes we've gone to, you can already tell that this lake, it's ready for tourists, not so much locals. I really, the last sort of nail in the coffin for me is that between that massive parking lot and the lake shore is a sort of Simulcra tourist shop strip mall. Instead of a legitimate town, a thriving little community like at Amadze, Schliodze, Tegunze, you name it, here at Koenigse, it's a strip mall. And me as a local and as a guide, I wanna show you a little bit better than that. I can see international guides really enjoying this, uh, maybe picking up a little bit of souvenir tat, but <laughs> you know, again, for me as a local, that just really isn't particularly compelling. All that being said, negativity aside, this isn't a hit piece on Koenigsee by any means. I'm not standing here telling you not to come here. I'm not telling you that it's a tourist trap and I'm not telling you that you can't have an amazing time here. I'm just trying to show you what I think many other people don't because I would hate for you to spend all of your money and time to come to somewhere that has been misrepresented. My goal with this channel is to always be as honest as possible. If you're looking for something really lived in, this isn't gonna do it. Whereas some of the other lakes that I've been to definitely will. I think there are a lot of people who will really appreciate coming here. One personal example that comes 
comes to mind is actually with my own mother who is unfortunately disabled. Uh, she's, mobility has been limited for a long time. And so when I look at the other lakes, Amadze, even Teguense, Fliotse, I don't think that'd be the best place to take her. Whereas this, the idea that I could just rent a car one day, put her in the back of it, drive her here, convenient parking lot. Yeah, it's not a real town. It's a bit of a simulcra, but it's well paved. Bring her to the front and get her on a boat so she can see this. I would love to do that one day. So I think for certain people, this is definitely the option, but it's not the option for everyone. I think that's what everyone else often says. Now the itinerary for most people when they arrive to Kunigse is they're gonna get on a boat, have a beautiful boat tour through the lake, and then stop at St. Bartholomew Church, take some pictures, maybe get back on the boat, go to the end of the lake and do a small hike <laughs> that I think a lot of travel vloggers overblow is a big hike to an even smaller lake that's quite cute. I don't love this kind of travel because it's very get schlepped to a nice place, take a picture and leave. I just don't find that very engaging or very interesting, but I think we've got something figured out for today. What we're going to be doing is taking the boat ride, but if you're in the now and you say the secret passcode, there is actually another port that they can drop you off at request only. It takes you to the bottom of hopefully not a too difficult hiking trail where we're going to be going up the mountain you see behind us and sleep overnight in a very cool mountain hut. Mm -hmm. It's going to be something completely different. Uh, I hope they make the special request for us. I hope they stop. We'll be the only ones getting off. <laughs> Heute wir möchten uh, nach Kessel gehen zum Grotzenalm und dann morgen kommen zurück. Ist das möglich? We have our tickets. I think we have to pay in cash tomorrow when we get onto the boat, if we get onto the boat. But now we just need to say the secret passphrase. Let's see if it works. Sehr optimistisch. Dann könnten wir nach Kessel gehen. Ja, danke. Wir gehen nach Kessel. Are you excited? Oh, I'm super excited now. It feels real. Now that we're on the boat, we're sitting here. They accepted that we're going to Kessel. I think it's just a hidden gem hiding in plain sight. Famous last words, but I think we're doing all right. Vorne auf der linken Seite ist jetzt eine Bedarfshaltestelle, das ist der Kessel. Er wird nur im Sommer angefahren für Bergsteiger und Bergwanderer. Von dort aus können Sie schöne Wanderungen beginnen oder beenden. Eine schöne Wanderung ist rechts hinauf zur Gottsnalm. Die Gottsnalm liegt ja links gegenüber von der Halbinsel St. Bartholomä auf knappe 1740 Meter. Wir werden hier kurz stehen bleiben, lassen ein paar Wanderfreunde aussteigen und dann geht es sofort weiter mit der Fahrt nach Bartholomä. Und mit meiner Erklärung. Danke Ihnen. Ciao. All right. We're marooned. <laughs> Ciao. I can barely believe it. And look where we have to go. I mean, already, this is exceptionally beautiful. The mountains, incredible. This meadow, that cute little hut. Yeah, if all goes well, I'll see you back down here. I mean, you're coming with me, but we'll see each other back down here tomorrow where you flip these signs here. So there's a sign here if you want to go to Saint Bartholomé, there's a sign over here if you want to go back to Kunigse. You put that sign up so you can signal which way you want to go. I think we got really lucky and we're hitting the end of the summer mountain oh, yeah. wildflower situation. Yes. <laughs> Look at that. I am a little bit worried about the hike. It's gonna be the biggest hike we've done in a while. And I haven't been able to go to the gym because I was sick so much. This is a, a real trial by fire. And there might be a thunderstorm tonight. Everything's good right now. Everything is calm, everything is peaceful. We'll worry about thunderstorms later. Beautiful. Great, ready to get hiking? This is already better than I could ever imagine. I really owe my friend on this one because you might be wondering, well, Ben, how do you know about this when nobody else seems to? Well. There's actually one of my best friends out here in Germany grew up in Berchtesgaden. His granddad was instrumental in getting this to be founded as kind of a national park. So he knows all the ins and outs of this place. And we were drinking a couple liters in and he said, I can't believe you've never made a video on Berchtesgaden. And I said, well, everyone's video is the bloody same. And 
I just feel like it's over touristing this beautiful part of the world. I've got nothing to add. And he said, yeah, you do. <laughs> I just laid out this entire thing. And he said he's dismayed by how few people know about this, how few people dare to do it. And honestly, that's how this video came about. All of a sudden, my opinion flipped. Uh, Koenigse went from being an over-touristed place that I had nothing to add to, to a real adventure. God, I hope we don't see any snakes in here. <laughs> You really can tell that not that many people must be hiking this route. Mm -hmm. uh, time will tell if it's because it's bad or just not enough people know about it. But it feels like we're in a jungle. The trail is so uh, unkempt. I mean, it's nice, it's clear, it's obvious, but it's so lush. Mother Nature is trying to reclaim it best she can. Hopefully we don't get lost. <laughs> So I already think that this hike is kind of in the camp of a hidden gem that not a lot of people know about because we've already seen so many animals. So They're true. just not scared by the hikers coming through because not that many people come through. We've seen a toad. We saw a weird looking lizard. I'm really hoping we can see a marmot once we get up to the elevation. I really hope there are no snakes. Maybe. <laughs> and I'm procrastinating hopping over this log. It's just sketchy enough that I'm not gonna be very good at it. I mean, that's the thing, a part of me is like, do I really wanna put my weight on this? <laughs> do I wanna ride it down? Yeah. You could put your feet on the mud. Oh, Jesus. It's my backpack. It <laughs> sure is. I couldn't pull myself up because I've got oh. like 20 pounds extra. Let's hope for not too many more of those. That is wild. This entire part of the switchback completely blew out. Looks like a tree came down and took the entire corner of the trail with it. Just, uh, it's a bit scrambly. There's no way the camera will show it, but the views of the mountains and the lake through the trees, it's gorgeous. I knew we were going on a real adventure today. Koenigsee is delivering. All right, first break of the trip so far. We're about an hour in. I am so sweaty. <laughs> Not just because it's hard. I mean, it's gonna be uphill pretty much the whole way. The weather's good right now, but it was a thunderstorm and rain yesterday and through the night. But that does mean it's the humidity, not the heat that gets you. <laughs> yeah, overall the hike is super beautiful. There's still quite a few more hours to go. Definitely, definitely don't do this as your first hike, but I am really enjoying it so far. All right, I'm gonna eat my Pringles in peace. See you back on the road. Oh no. Those are the shittiest looking log stairs I've ever seen. Was there another oh. rock slide? It kind of looks like it. Oh fuck. Oh, this is sketchy as fuck. I have lost sight of the trail entirely. Oh, this is awful. This is so bad. That is hard with the backpack. I'm, I'm really afraid to push myself up because my backpack's so heavy. I'm worried I'm going to push up and just fall backwards. I'll use my butt. <laughs> oh, now I have to use my thighs. Ah! Oh. You want to grab my hand? I can help pull you up on this one. Don't pull me over. There we go. <laughs> oh. Hello, you can see the boat. Look at this view. And I really am just like super grateful to be out here with you. It's really, really special. It's wonderful to be here. And I always get a little sentimental when we can film videos with the big old backpacks because these are 10 years old. Me and Camille bought them at REI in Northern Virginia back right when you graduated university. Yeah. In fact, this was actually your graduation present, wasn't it? Yeah, my mom and dad were like, do you want like jewelry? for your graduation, <laughs> and I was like, no, I want a hiking backpack. We took them to Japan. Oh, that was cool. The year later, they were instrumental in Japan, and that's the trip that inspired this channel. I really wish we were filming back then, but I don't think we've ever gotten to show these backpacks Germany, so <laughs> it seems silly. It's just a backpack, but it is special to me. So many years of sweat. <laughs> they must be so gross by now. <laughs> Tell you what, a good purchase. Really got our money's worth out of these things. Actually only been going for like 20 minutes since the last time that we rested, but take a look at this. 
I mean, this is a great spot. So if you can make it to here, this is a very cool spot to be. It's really pretty. Ah, actually some nice rocks to sit on, plenty of places for your pack, and the view, stunning, so. Great lunch spot uh, that I'm gonna sit here for like five minutes, just cause you gotta soak it in when you can, but then we really need to get going. I'm so nervous about making it on time today. This is the hardest hike I've done in so long. Ooh, wish me luck. All right, so we're two hours into the hike right now. We've still got a long way to go. And I know that some of you out there, well, at least I think what you might be thinking is, well, this is a hidden gem and all, but it's not really relevant to me because I'm not in the mood to do a four and a half hour minimum, probably more like a six hour hike, sleep overnight and come back down. That's great for you, but not for my vacation. So I do want to talk a little bit about some options you might have. If we take a look at this sign here, I mean, for the other options that you have right now, I've seen a few people on trail and I asked them, where on earth are you coming from? And a lot of them said, well, they went to the Königsbach Alm. You can start that hike from essentially Königsee itself, where we got on the boat. Instead of going on the boat, you could start hiking. I'll put the map on screen so it makes sense. You could go to the Königsbach Alm for lunch, hike about an hour to here, an hour and a half down. And now it's only really three hours of hiking with lunch in the middle and a boat ride. Ride, that is a good hidden gem alternative to what everyone else is doing. So even if the exact itinerary I'm offering for you today isn't quite up your alley, really do give the other options a consideration because this is just so beautiful, so peaceful. And Camille was right. We're here at the perfect time for wildflowers. Nothing beats an alpine meadow. It's a marmot. Greetings from the marmot. <laughs> there it is. Does he live under the house? I think that's where he came from. No, no, he was by the river. Goodbye, marmot. Bye, marmot. <gasps> no, he's digging. <gasps> that's what they're known for. Yeah, oh, there he is. There, there he is. Hold on. Enhance. Enhance. There he is. Oh my God. <gasps> they're fighting. Marmot. Oh. Up the Marmot Alpine region. It's a curious fight. The <laughs> That's so true. He's got more than one. <laughs> Why are you so good at this? You know, I was feeling really grateful because we've seen like seven toads at this point. <laughs> you have been touching every toad, which I don't think you're supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get warts. Oh. Maybe the marmot can help me out. Maybe. And in fact, if you don't mind me being so bold, this is probably the perfect time to remind you that we do itinerary consultations because sometimes you just need a local's touch and refinement of your itinerary. I like to think that all of my videos are good enough that you could just follow them, but sometimes, like what we just discussed down there at the signpost, there's lots of options. So if you have an itinerary coming up, somewhere that we've been, preferably, then please do check out the link on screen now, description box below. It's a great way to support the channel, to help us out, to, and frankly, just, it's great to meet you. <laughs> oh. Anyway, I'm out of breath now. Thank you ever so much. Let's keep walking. Okay, excuse me, I am profusely sweaty. However, <laughs> this is the first time we've had a view back down the lake to Oh the yeah. Day. But yeah, that's the first time we've actually seen where we started this morning, where the bus dropped us off. We have traveled a great distance. We still have a long ways to go. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> One hour away from Gotsenalm. And I'm gonna be honest here, I really think that we underestimated how hard this hike was gonna be. I just got so excited by the prospect of getting off at a secret dock and hiking up to an alm that can only be accessed by foot. I didn't really look up the elevation gain. <laughs> we did not. <laughs> and I think this is the most elevation gain we've ever done in Germany. Don't let this be your first hike. Don't let this be your first few hikes. We're fine, but you definitely need to be an experienced hiker to do this. If you are, totally recommend. This right. is fantastic. And like Ben said, if you still want to do something really cultural like this, there are right. lots of way easier options in the area. Yeah, there's a lot more options. The Königsbach Alm really seems like a good play. We can do it. It's hiring.
Mickey Meals filming for Marmots, but I found something I think you're really gonna like. We've got some wild alpine strawberries. Whoa, they're so cute. They are very cute. Let me try one. Do you think they're safe to eat? Uh, my friend said yes when we were <laughs> hiking one time. They are so small. Oh my God. Are they actually good? It actually tastes like a strawberry. And strawberries are my favorite food. I feel like we've earned wild strawberries. Mountain food tour. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely that good. Really good, it tastes like a proper strawberry. I mean, just don't think about all of the different animals that have peed on it. I mean, I feel like I'm stealing from a fairy. This like little setup is so cute. It is kind of the cutest area. You've got like this split, there's a log. Yeah, it's like a circle of stones, a log over there, a hole in the middle. It feels like a fairy well. For the Insta, <laughs> you couldn't ask for better lighting right now for I these know. strawberries. This is insane. We are so high up, guys. The camera can't do it justice. I mean, could you imagine? That's where we were. It looks like maybe 80, 90 meters to go. My legs are real shaky. <laughs> I'll talk to you when I get up there. We'll collapse trying. But what on earth am I supposed to say now? You know, that's one of the, <laughs> one of the best parts of this. Just what am I looking at, you know? In all honesty, uh, looking back at Koenigse, which looks like it's built for ants now, is kind of freaking me out because I get vertigo at heights and we have now hiked so high up, I have got proper vertigo. Going down is gonna freak me out, but three more minutes and we'll be there. Right as I crested the summit, literally hands on thighs, using my arms to walk, is this lovely uh, gentleman, I think he works at the arm, just standing there <laughs> looking at the view. He turns to me and he goes, ah, no Jurassic Minuten. <laughs> I was like, no! <laughs> uh, he was just kidding. Three minutes, dry, not Jurassic. But I'll tell you what, when I'm this tired, German humor, I'm not so good at it. <laughs> oh, and there were horses and cars. How the hell did they drive up here? That is our arm for the evening. Hopefully we'll have a warm bed. Hopefully we'll have plenty of good food and beer. Maybe we'll make it to the mountain peak today or tomorrow. But mission now, let's get this backpack off. Let's have a good sit down and just really soak in the alpine ambiance, the horses, the cows. This is lovely. Oh, really happy to be here with you. Sweaty <laughs> So sweaty. All right, now that we've arrived, what's the game plan? Well, unfortunately, we arrived around 6.30, half an hour before the kitchen closes, or at least last orders are called. So we haven't even checked into the room yet. I ordered food. <laughs> I'm absolutely starving. You gotta have your priorities straight. But the main event for right now has to be the beer. This comes from the town of Berchtesgaden itself. They have the Hofbräu House, not to be confused with Munich's Hofbräu House. I've had this beer before. I think it might be one of my favorites and it's probably gonna hit different after all the hiking we just did. Let's find out. I might need a few of these today, especially since they're serving in small. Absolutely delicious though. I also want to call attention to, I think their logo is really pretty. Just talking about pretty beer logos, I think the, the, the Hofbräu of Berchtesgaden has got to be one of my favorites. If you haven't had this beer before, you really got to try it. I mean, it's a Bavarian Helles at the end of the day, you can imagine what it tastes like, but it's really good. I am so pumped to eat this Cajun Spressla, and it's my first time having one at an overnight hut. This one looks especially rustic. I don't know mm. how to describe it. I'm just gonna try it. Oh, that's really good. Oh, is it really? Mm-hmm. It's got that big Cajun in there. And they did that thing I love with Cajun Spressla, where they kind of fry the bottom almost, like it's so hot and oily, but the bottom turns into like a crispy cheese Cajun Spressla layer. And the fried onions, I don't know what they did to them, but they are so good. Maybe I can finish eating mine and then we can do yours. 
I'm so hungry, I need to try this. So I went with the spinach knudel inside a mushroomy, uh, well they got the Ramschwemmel sauce. It's one of my favorite sauces. I like to get it on my schnitzel and Austrians like to hate me for it. <laughs> but at least we can all agree that this is a perfect place for mushroom sauce. Also kind of like curious, it's very rustic. It doesn't look like the kind of knudel you get in Munich, but how does it taste? I feel like we might even need to swap. I think this is perfect for you. I like it quite a lot as well, but that is one of the best mushroom sauces I've ever had. Well, it's crazy because it doesn't even look like a sauce to me. It looks mm. like a soup. It's so much creamier than you think it's going to be. And the dumpling is insanely rustic in the way that you can tell it's a bread dumpling. A lot of the ones in Munich, they process the bread much finer to create a more like homogenous whole, whereas this, not even close. Right, there's something about that that's different than what we usually get. I don't know if it's creamier, but it's very mushroomy, mm -hmm. which I approve of. Try the dumpling. Right. That's good. The, so it's super bready, which it should be. It's a bread dumpling. Right, I mean, you can see the individual bread pieces. But they've got some kind of like herb in there mm -hmm. that's really punching through and working well with that like bready zemmelk noodle taste. That's so good. In general, we've done quite well for a vegetarian meal at a mountain hut. I'm very impressed by that. <laughs> I have slept in hostels before, but I have never slept in anything quite like this. I mean, it was the only thing available. <laughs> I booked it last week. <laughs> I can see why. So I knew it was going to be many beds. I didn't know that it was going to be people literally sleeping like arm to arm. <laughs> Friendship beds. <laughs> Next to strangers. Yeah, 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 we're here at 1617. We have like our own little nuke. Okay, I think I can make that work. I must admit, when I walked in, I was a little worried. So let us know in the comments below, would you sleep in here? <laughs> How much did we pay? It's like 30 euros a person. Would you pay 30 euros a person? It should be decently comfy. I will say it is actually really warm in here, but there are also no light bulbs. There are also some house rules. Let's go over them now. Breakfast is actually only from 7 to 8.30, and we need to have completely left this room by 9 a.m., so early checkout. And of course, you can't wear your Bergschuhe, your hiking boots, up into, we're actually on the second floor of the entire building. There's actually a mud room kind of separating the dining area from the stairs that take you up here. Smelliest room I've ever been in. Though overall, it's not too bad. I actually think it'll be really fun to stay here. The vibes are pretty cool in this place. I'm glad we've got our own block of wood to separate us from the strangers. It's gonna be an experience, and that's what this is all about, right? <laughs> but would you sleep here? 30 euros a night, is it worth it per person? So, I mean, it's cheaper than a regular hotel, but... And cheaper than a lot of hostels. I'm not getting as much as a regular hotel. <laughs> I know, I feel like I started yawning and then you did. Oh man, I'm so tired. What did you think of today? That was exhausting, but very cool. Yeah, tell me about it. Oh my God. I mean, I guess when I come to think about it, you know, I think your mental toughness is way better than mine for hiking. There were moments today I didn't think I could do it. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to like front, like, oh, I can always handle everything. Like there were moments of that hike. I was like, should we? Like re nobody knows we're making this video. <laughs> we could just go to the uh, was the Königbach Alm or something like that. Like we could just do the easier version. You'd be like, yeah, welcome to the Königbach Alm. I bet you've never heard of here. it. <laughs> Though I will say this, I promised you at the beginning of the video I would find you something truly authentic right next to an over touristed spot, and I think I delivered that in spades. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. We have to wake up and be out of here by 9 a.m. Breakfast at 7:30. I'll see you in the morning, guys. That little fella scared me half to death. <laughs> Did not see him from the corner of my eye. Good morning, everybody. How was your sleep? Mine was okay. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But what is the game plan now that we're alive and well? Well, the weather's a bit shit. The guest house is already deserted. It's 9.15 in the morning. Before we get our packs on, I'd like to go and see the peak before we leave. So let's go do that now, and we'll review the hut a little bit more out of here, sure. Sean. 
This is a spectacular place to wake up to though. It's just so, so pretty. And people live up here too. Yeah, so there are a bunch of alms here, which is where the farmers will stay during the summer with their cows. I can't actually believe that there are cows up here. There are so many alpine cows. They've all gone over to that meadow now. But when we woke up this morning, it was just horses and cows everywhere. 15 minutes by the sign, no packs. We're gonna make good time. Let's get to the peak. Okay, now that we are sufficiently out of earshot of the hut, let's review it because we have quite a lot to say, but we'll try to keep it brief. So this was the first time since moving to Germany almost six years ago that I properly felt like an outsider. <laughs> if you watch any content about foreigners living in Germany online, you'll know that like culture shocks is a big topic. And I find them to be a little bit annoying and derivative. It's a lot of like, the cashiers go really fast. <laughs> Windows open two separate ways. And I don't know, I just never found that kind of stuff to be that shocking when we moved here. I felt like I never really went through like a massive culture shock until we were at this alm. <laughs> Last night. I mean, it was like everyone had their own table. Everyone, it was very rowdy up until exactly 10 o'clock <laughs> when everyone stopped what they were doing and then they all went to bed. This was the first time that my language skill has ever been like, shit, I need to practice more because my Hochdeutsch gets me pretty far. All yesterday, it was perfectly fine until we checked in there and I was like, oh my God. I have no idea what's going on. And everyone warned us before coming to Bavaria. They're like, oh, they speak Bayerisch, it'll be difficult. Not in Munich, not in the places we usually go. But when you hike this much, my God, that was wild. And as far as the amenities go, there weren't a lot. There was no shower. The bathrooms were all right, they were fine. Um, yeah, rustic bathrooms, spiders. Uh, but n not too many, but you know, some. No hot water. <laughs> no hot water, no showers, no pillow. So there weren't a ton of amenities. The food, however, was incredibly standout to me. We've been eating Bavarian food for five years now. That was the most rustic, authentic, proper mountain Bavarian food I've ever had. So the food was amazing. The amenities were weird. Uh, <laughs> the Germans were finally incredibly German. But overall, I'm really glad we've had this experience. I'm really glad we pushed ourselves to hike. I'm really glad that we got to see another side to Berchtesgaden, which I think still has a pretty strong culture. You just have to go really far out of your way to get to it. We are now on a ridge that is just drop off on both sides, heading to the point, and I think we're gonna get a view of the lake. But this is the culmination of seven hours of hiking, one night in an alm, and about another 20 minutes this morning getting up here. It's all coming to a close. Oh, I hope it's good. Holy shit! That's insane! That is where we started yesterday, all the way down there, the water's edge. Oh, and you can see uh, San Bartolome. Wow. We have to hike back down all of that in about an hour. Sharing one pair of hiking poles. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be wild. This is one of the most beautiful views I've ever had. What do you think? Yeah. Has it been worth it? Yeah, this is crazy. And if I may, not to, you know, beat a dead horse here, but, I talked a lot yesterday about bad quality travel guides and honestly, I wanna sum it up just looking at this viewpoint, right? And that's my issue that I take with so many travel vlogs and guides that are so much bigger. It's not just that I'm jealous, I am jealous. You know, you watch video after video, blog after blog, you go to TripAdvisor and every single time, Berchtesgaden, Eagle's Nest, ride the boat, listen to the trumpet, done, over and over again. And that makes the world feel small. And that's insane to me. The planet Bavaria is just so massive. There's so much room for all of the tourists, as long as you spread out a little bit, right? And that's what I hope this channel does. We've made like 140 videos in Bavaria alone. And the list of videos I want to make today is longer than it has ever been. There's so much to see. There's so much to do. But not a lot of people are really interested in showing you that. Most people, if I may, because I've spent a long time in the industry, I've gone to a lot of events, I've spoken to a lot of people, 
They're just interested in showing you what you want to see, showing you the same five because you click on it, they get views, they grow, they get paid money, and it's just a little bit gross to me. There's a lot less integrity in the industry than I think uh, there should be. If you want to hear more about that, the ways that you get kind of conned by poor quality guides, but take this away. If you watch a guide and they make the world feel small, they've done a pretty bad job because this is just insane. I hope you appreciate that. Anyway, I'm going to enjoy this view. I'm going to relax and I'm going to start hiking down. Hiking pole extended, pack on, Camille just behind me, and the rain is gone. Oh, it's actually really good weather now. Feels so weird to be going home. I feel like I've been here for two minutes and a lifetime. How about you? That's the spooky horse that freaked me out last night. He's very friendly, but he was just standing like a statue. Goodbye, Götzenalm. I'll see you again. Maybe. <laughs> all right, say goodbye to the Alpine Meadow. It's all descent from here. I've had such a good time with you. Love you. All right, down we go. Only on the way down do I truly appreciate what we've accomplished. And it's a lot. Are you really? testing your luck with the strawberries again. And I hope you can hear it. We're coming down in the woods now. You can see the lake. We're getting closer to it. It's not quite so daunting as it was this morning from the peak. And in between ragged breath, you can hear the trumpets again. That's beautiful. We must be close now, maybe another hour. But are you ready for the final enemy on this trail? That awful rock slide that I didn't like preceded by a gross wooden ladder. No, you don't need to butt method that rock. I'll look away to preserve your dignity. And just like that, oh, we have exited the forest. We have descended a literal mountain peak and are back by the water's edge. Absolutely unbelievable. It's gorgeous to be down here. And to just have succeeded in our mission feels fantastic. Let's call the ship back to Koenigse. I just want to say thank you so much for watching. You've really stuck around through quite an interesting video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I know it might not be everyone's cup of tea, but the fact that you're still watching means the absolute world to me. So thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, leave us a tip. If you think we've earned it, don't forget about the itinerary consultations, and I will see you in the next video, wherever that might be. Thank you.